Hello, Eric King coming to you once again from Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. This is our sixth revelation. We've entitled messages that there's seven in total. This is the sixth revelation. And it's important that you watch all of these revelations in, in order because they explain pretty much the foundation of what we refer to as the seventh message. They contain the meat of, of revelation that Christian churches and Christians need today. And so, it's very important that you understand this. Now, many of you know controversially, not just in the, um, in the fifth uh, revelation, we establish, uh, about, talk about a latter-day David that the scriptures refer to. We've also got other lectures spread throughout Nugget of Truth that do refer to that latter-day David. Now, today we're going to establish just when it is that this latter-day David comes, and how he plays a vital role in the reestablishment of the Davidic or Davidian kingdom that Christ is going to return for. You know, it amazes me, you know, being a dispensationalist Christian, and those of you that know, that have studied here know what that means, that, that form of Christianity is, is the most accurate. It understands the covenants of God. <clears throat> it understands the, in consecutive order, these uh, different dispensations of time, and we look at the whole Bible and we, we accept the Bible as a completed book from Genesis to Revelation. And it surprises me that most Christians don't realize when we read in Luke chapter 1, and we've established this in previous lectures, in Luke chapter 1, we have an angel appearing to Mary, the angel Gabriel announcing uh, Jesus' birth. And the angel Gabriel says something very important that I want you to pick up on in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33. Speaking of Jesus before he was born, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob or Jacob forever, Olam, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Now, notice this says that. Jesus will eventually be given the throne of his father David. Now, in order for him to be given that throne, we have to understand that that throne will be here for him to receive. And that's why we're going to look at some, some scriptures that establish this fact. First of all, the Davidic covenant regarding this issue is found in 2 Samuel. We read in 2 Samuel about this Davidic uh, uh, covenant Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more. Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from a sheepfold from following the sheep to be ruler over my people Israel. When your days are fulfilled and, your rest, and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Now we must understand that this 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 eternal covenant here, out of the four eternal covenants, God's covenant with David is the the fourth of the oldest theocratic covenants that spell out the rule of God over His people. And after David's kingdom was established, God made a covenant with him that established the Davidic dynasty as God's choice to rule His people into perpetuity, into etern into eternity. In Psalm eighty nine. God says there's no way there's no way any man can destroy that throne. Psalm 89 verse 3 and 4 I have made a covenant with my chosen I have sworn to my servant David that's the covenant we just read 2 Samuel chapter 7 Your seed I will establish forever and I will build up your throne to all generations. Verse 20 of Psalm 89, I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. Also my arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down the foes before his face and plague those who hate him. And then finally, in Psalm 89, verses 34 through 37, we read, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. No one can change this Davidic covenant. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. And his throne as the sun before me, it shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. Silah means, Silah means think about this. The throne is still here, even after Israel is scattered. It's actually 
it's actually being represented by the ecclesia, the church of, of, of Jesus Christ right now. It's not yet a full theocratic government, but it will be restored. David shall never lack a man to sit on his throne. We read in Jeremiah 33 and verse 17. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. That means ever since Israel was even scattered into captivity, that bloodline of David was always here and is now here in the church even. And there's always somebody there to, to give this message of the Davidic kingdom, and the king, which is the coming kingdom of God, which will be established on this earth. Israel was prophesied to be scattered. Hosea chapter 2 verse 11, Jeremiah 50 verse 17, Jeremiah 23 verse 2. They were taken into Babylonian captivity and then proceeded from there into Medo-Persian. Um, uh, they had restoration of freedom of religion, but they were still under captivity, <clears throat> under Koresh, under Cyrus, in his kingdom that came in. And then from there, Greece came in. We have Alexander the Great, coming and we then from there they go into Roman captivity and today they're scattered abroad. Jesus came to 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 promise them the kingdom and instead they rejected him. And Jesus says when they when they kill the shepherd the sheep will be scattered again. They didn't they didn't accept him. Jesus came riding in a donkey to Jerusalem. He said if you knew the time that this was and the day and hour that this was and who I am, you could you, we could enter that Davidian kingdom, but they didn't want to. And of course Christ did have to die and be crucified for our sins before he could establish that kingdom because we have to be washed clean before we can even enter it. Now, the church is gathering in the, the saints during the ecclesiastical or sixth dispensation. Those who study here know what I'm talking about. Israel prophesied to be regathered starting with the church and the proclamation of the new covenant. We go to Isaiah 11. We read about this regathering that really picked up speed after the Christian church. We read in Isaiah 11:11, 11, 11, It shall come to pass in that day, he's talking about the Laodicean period particularly, that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt and Pathros and Cush and Elam and Shinar and from Hamath and the isles of the sea. He says in verse 12, I will set up a banner for the nations, and will assemble the outcasts of Israel. And he's going to establish them and call them from all four corners of the earth. We read about this finally happening, this final gathering of Israel, uh, is when he begins to send out, <clears throat> when he begins to, to seal the final 144,000. We read about that in Revelation chapter 7. He seals 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. This will be the final regathering of Israel. And it is during that regathering, brothers and sisters, the church will have already been caught up and caught out, harpazo. But then there's three and a half years of two witnesses uh, preaching the gospel. Then they're killed and caught up. And then the final 144,000 begin to call in the great multitude. We read about all of this in Revelation. Isaiah covers this. Isaiah says, in Isaiah 66, verse 15, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, which is his word, the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Then he goes on to verse 18, For I know their works and their thoughts, Jesus says to the church of Laodicea, For I know your works and I know your thoughts, that you are neither cold nor hot. Here in Isaiah, For I know your works and their thoughts. It shall be in that I will gather all the nations and tongues, and they shall come see my glory. I will set a sign among them. That will be the sealing of the final 144,000. And those among them who escape, that is, escape the Antichrist's slaughter, I will send to them to the nations. And he lists all the nations, Tarshish, Pol, Lud, Tubal. And he, he lists all of them. And he says in verse 19 of Isaiah 66, And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. That's the great multitude. They're going to call in the great multitude. And again, we read about this in Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 19, part of that regathering. Also, the, we read about the gathering in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse, verses 3 through 6, Jeremiah 30, verses 3, and the final 144,000 of Israel will be the regathering of Israel 
uh, Revelation chapter 7. Now it is during this time, brothers and sisters, that we believe the last day David will, uh, will appear because they're going to set up that last day David, as 144,000 are going to set up that last day David as a prince among them. You read about this in the major and minor prophets. And if we go to uh, Zechariah, prophet Zechariah, well first, let's go to Hosea. And it says in the last days when, when the 144,000 are going to seek out this latter day David. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillar, without ephod or teraphim. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return, seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and fear the Lord and his goodness. When? In the latter days. We read about this latter day David in Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah 30, verse 9. And in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, it says they will appoint him and they will follow this latter-day David. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeves of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And where did they hear that? They heard it through what we're proclaiming now, the seventh message, which 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 we hand down to the 144,000. Remember that angel that arises from the east in Revelation 7. They're about ready to unleash the finality of the seven seals and that angel that comes from the east says, hold, 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 wait, till we, the John class, the church, the true church, have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And these people during the tribulation that understand who the 144,000 are and understand who that latter David, that David Koresh is, they say, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And of course, they heard that from God's word, the seventh message. They will set up the new Israel, theocratic throne, under the new David. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 23. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, that the church will have already been caught out when all this happens. The church will have already be caught up. But when the 144,000 from each of the 12 tribes choose this David figure, to be set up over him. They don't choose him as Christ. They know he's not Jesus Christ, but they know he's the theocratic leader. We read in Luke chapter 1 again that when Jesus returns, he will be given the throne of his father David. So the throne of David will be established at the end of the seven-year tribulation when Jesus comes back with the saints, the caught-up ones in Revelation 19, to receive that throne. And he has made us, the church, kings and priests to rule with him during that millennial kingdom. Again, Ezekiel 35, verse 23, I will establish one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. My servant David, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. Now again, this is not talking about King David of old. This was written hundreds of years after. This is a future David. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Right now, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 8, 9, and 10, we read what's happening now. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they, they are about to come. Now, we, we know that ancient Israel traveled, the ten tribes, the ten so-called lost ten tribes went up uh, through Asia Minor and over the Caucasus Mountains and into what is now Europe and Great Britain and finally into America and Australia and New Zealand, Canada. And so these ancient Israelites will be gathered from the ten tribes, including the tribe of Judah, the Jews will be gathered. But in the meantime, God has put forth branches. Jesus says the church is the branches. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And what are these branches doing? Ezekiel 36, verse 9. For indeed I am for you, and I will turn to you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men among you, all the house of Israel and all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the ruins rebuilt. So through these branches, they're giving the message to help restore ancient Israel. The church is even doing that right now. This future Davidian kingdom will be here for Jesus Christ to take back. Luke chapter 1, verse 32, 33. And the Christian church will return with Christ for this future throne. Revelation chapter 19. So people say, when do we, the ancient Antiochian church, believe that David this future David Koresh is going to return. 
is going to return during Great Tribulation, specifically sometime after the middle of the Great Tribulation. <clears throat> Establish that throne. So when Jesus comes back, he will be given that throne. And David will be a prince among them on the new earth, and even ancient David of old, brothers and sisters, it says in Scripture, will be resurrected and reign with us all during that millennial kingdom. What a glorious time that will be. This ends the sixth and one of the very important revelations of the seven. This ends that revelation, Revelation chapter 6. Stay tuned here at Nugget of Truth and Shepherd's Way for the seventh and final revelation.